Welcome back to the next step. And in this step, we want to talk about here the middle part of the banana, and we want to have a little bit more definition on the surface. So for this, I've loaded another image here into my compositing view. And you see here that we have, if we look a little bit closer here, we have these creases here on the surface. In this uh, example, we have one, two, three, maybe four here. And these are really prominent. And this is really interesting for the middle part. And then if we look here at the end, you see the end is still a little bit more rounded here. And it seems that we have really three parts of this banana shape. So this part here, the end on this side, then the creases, which go here into a round ending. And then again, here the stem which brings here these edges a little bit into this part here. So let's do something like that. And for this, we need some more cuts here on our surface. And the first thing I want to do is I switch you back to a single view, go back here now into my main view. And under the D key, I apply my operations to all split views again, so that we have our same shading in all views. Then you see that I have added here a null object at the end of my tree to tell now, okay, until this point, we have an organic shape and then we make our creases and so on. So you have a little bit more an idea later what you have done in which step. You can also name some of these nodes, but in my case, it's okay. So let's make some cuts here. So I press the C key and we use edge loop again. And the first edge loop we need is here. And this time I use my snap menu to have the middle point here. This is one, then I press the Q key to get a new edge split node here. I go then over this point, click. And now we have our two edge splits here. Great. The next thing I have to do now is I have to shape the whole thing here again so that I come back here to a more organic shape and then we move these creases. For this, I have to select parts of these edges here. And to do that, we can use, let me deactivate here really fast, the subdivisions. We can use the A keyboard shortcut. Let's try this. If you have the select tool in the edge mode, you normally select edge loops by double clicking on an edge. And you see Houdini searches here the loop and you get it directly under your fingertips. But if you only want to have a part of a loop, you can use the A key. For this, I first select a starting edge and then you go to the end edge, which you want to have in our case, for example, this here or this here. Let's take this here. And now I hold down the A key on my keyboard. And if you now look, here into my viewport, you see a blue line, which indicates which path now Houdini will search. And if you now click, you get this edge loop here selected. Now we take the transform tool and I move here the edge a little bit up. Okay, that's the first step. Now we go here and make the same thing here. And I go to the select tool, select this edge here. I hold down the A key, select this edge here, T key again, and this time we go into this direction. Okay, and the same for the sides. So S key to deselect, S this year, A key this year, and then T. I bring this a little bit out. And because a banana is not a technical object, we go now here and I move this for example, a little bit down here. Sorry, I go back, I take here the Y, and then the Z, I think that's a little bit better. Yeah, something like that. And then we go to the other side, select this here, and a key this here. T key and I move this out first and the other side we've brought down. So maybe I press the M key to go here into global space and move this a little bit up so that we have not the same direction in all of these. Then we can reshape these here. 
S key to go to select mode, this and A key that here, T key. You see, it's organic shape. So first we have to find something which is not so perfect anymore. And maybe once more and then we are done. So this here and that here. Okay. Now we have done our loops here. And if we now press the plus here and I press shift W to get rid here of my wireframe and go out, you see now it looks like that here. So it's not so evenly shaped anymore. And the next step is now we have to bring the points in an organic manner so that we don't get here ugly artifacts. Okay, let's dive in again. In this edit node, we had made the loops. And to get now a new edit node so that we later can back and forth, I go here, make a new edit node, select it. And now we go to the points. And now a little tip from my side here. You maybe have seen that we have here the secure selection tool which is a really useful tool if you um, work in some cases and you lose your selection all the time. But in my case now, when I start shaping things, this secure selection is in my way. Let's demonstrate this really fast. I go here to the edges mode and I want to work, for example, with this edge here. If I now want to move this edge, I take, for example, here the move tool. And the job of this secure selection here is that I can't deselect by accident. So if you click now somewhere here in the viewport, you see the selection stays where it is. So I really can shape now without being afraid that I lose this selection. But if I now want to work with points, for example, let's do the following thing. I press S2 here to go into points mode. And I have to go back here to this edit here. Shift W to get the things. And I want to move this point here. I go here to the move tool. I move this point now down. Now I want to have this point here. And you see, I can't select it because secure selection prevents me from doing that. And this is really annoying. So what I do is I deactivate now here the secure selection. And if you are now in a transform tool like move or rotate or scale, and you want to deselect, you can directly click somewhere and select something new. Or you also can drag directly, which is really cool if you have a organic shape like this. So you see, you can select your move tool, go over a point, and you only drag. You don't have to go here and make first a click to get the tool and so on. So you directly can now move these points around. And that's exactly now my job. I go now here around and I start moving these points here a little bit into the right place so that I don't get too ugly edges here and folds. So I want to have an organic flow here into the points. And maybe we saw that we have here on the stem a little bit these things and I like here the flow a little bit more if there's a little bit more rounded here. Something like that here. Yeah, this is something you can do later for yourself. But one thing we also have to do now is I want to show you how to make, for example, something round. And you see here, later we want to have this round. And due to the fact that we use a subdivision algorithm, you will see that it looks round, but it's still a little bit edgy. And what I do now is I select here the outer points. So for doing that, we can click here on the first point. And now we can hold down the A key if we like. And we go here over this point and you see these points in the middle are now highlighted. So Houdini tries now to find a path to this point. And if you click now, you have now selected these points. And now a little tip, if you want to add something, you hold the shift key. But if you want to add and use the A key, it's possible. So I hold down shift and I hold down A and I click now here and you see I add now 
to this selection, the rest here. It's really easy. And now you can use a function which is built in the context menu of this edit node. And for this, I have to make sure that I'm here in a move, in a rotate, or in a scale tool. If you now right mouse button click here near the handle, not onto the handle. If you click onto the handle, you have the context menu of the handle or the manipulator. You go here really close, click now with the right mouse button and you have a translation tool active. You see here now you have some functions for the move tool and one is here make a circle and it's a keyboard shortcut written here shift C and that's exactly what we want. Another really useful function is relax selection so shift R or straighten a selection which is shift S. So I make a circle now and now you see that's the circle we have. And if you want you also can try to make this circular if you really want. So let's demonstrate this really fast. I go to S3 to get here edge selections and now I can make a double click because this is a loop. And now I have to go here to one of these transform tools. Otherwise you see you get the select menu because you are in the select tool. So I go to move for example. And if I now click here with the right mouse button, you see again this menu, make circle, and now you have a more circular shape here. And now you can look here at this part here. And I don't really want to have this here circular. That's okay if it's not, but maybe this edge here. So make this more circular. And yeah, now we have a better shape. If you now press here the plus sign to see it here now in an organic manner. I think it's really good. I see here that my edit node was not active uh, so we can get rid of this here. But I think everything is fine now. And in the next step we now build our creases.